All right, Shalom. Before I get started, I would like to give all praise, glory, and honor unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rachahakwadash, Yahweh, being the true name of the Heavenly Father who the world ignorantly calls God, Jehovah, Yahweh, and Hashem. Yahweh, meaning He is or He exists, the existing one. And Yahweh Shai, being the true name of his only begotten son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ and Yeshua. Yahweh Shai, meaning he delivers or he is salvation, for he is truly the deliverance and the salvation of the nation of Israel. And Racha HaKodash is Hebrew for the Holy Spirit. For as it is commanded of me, I come unto you in the name of the Father and in the name of the Son and in the name of the Holy Spirit giving double honors unto the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who continue to rule well, and much peace, blessings, and salutations are due to the hopeful elect members of the nation of Israel, those of you who are of Negroid and Native Indian descent, of North, Central, and South America, the Caribbean Islands, Alaska, and Canada, also spread throughout the four corners of the earth due to the scattering for our iniquity, by the heavenly father himself unto the elect of you i say shalom and shalom is a hebrew word for peace so may peace be upon you and your loved ones here in these last days uh today's video will be a response to the iuic and the inspiration of this video comes by way of zephaniah the third chapter and the ninth verse. All right. Because the IUIC, beginning with the leadership, uses this particular precept to justify them so called not knowing the true name of the Heavenly Father. Okay. They use this verse to portray to the people that we. Do not know the real name of the Heavenly Father because we don't have the pure language yet. And in time, the new name of the Heavenly Father will be given unto us. But this is completely false because as the name was given unto our forefather Moses, our lawgiver, the name Yahweh is his name forever. All right. And as the angel Gabriel gave the name Yahweh Shai to Joseph and Mary, the parents of our Lord, his name is Yahweh Shai forever. All right. And these are the true names to call upon for our salvation in truth and in sincerity. All right. Now. I want to touch on the prophet Zephaniah, the third chapter and the ninth verse to show you uh, it goes just a little deeper than face value. Although the direct precept to this uh, chapter and verse is the prophet Isaiah 19 and 18 dealing with the language of Canaan, which is the Hebrew we will be speaking in the last days. But when you go a little deeper, it's going into a, a, a purification of the people. All right. So before I continue, I want to show you uh, this clip to prove that they use Zephaniah, the third chapter and the ninth verse as a uh, as an excuse to not call on the name of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. And Lord willing, this will be an edifying lesson. I like it. I ain't stopping. All right, let's go. Come on. And he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from, from my God. And I will write upon him 
my new name. So more. Remember, we just read he has a name that no man knows, right. and then he's gonna give us the new name. Right. And that is Zephaniah. Why? Why is that? Why? Why you gotta give us the new name? You know what I want, Zephaniah? Yeah, come on. Zephaniah three and twelve. Zephaniah chapter three, verse nine. And verse nine. But then, when I turn to the people, a pure language. So the reason why we don't even have the real name because we don't have the pure language. Because you Puerto Rican, right? You, your people in Puerto Rico, they speak Spanish, right? Yeah. My people are Haitian. In Haiti, they speak Creole. Right. Right. They don't know Spanish. They don't know English. Right. They're going to call on God on the name that they know. Right. Right. So we can't say you're going to be saved by the name because right. they're different languages. Right. You got brothers scattered in China, Japan, Iraq, right. Russia. Right. They speak all these different languages. They're going to call on God on the name that they know. Right. So we can't say by the name you're going to be saved. Right. So we can't say by the name you're going to be saved. Right. So we can't say by the name you're going to be saved. Right. So we can't say. All right, so you heard him, and this clip was taken from the elder uh, Karataza out of uh, Baltimore. All right, so you heard him. They used Zephaniah, the third chapter and the ninth verse, to justify them not knowing, supposedly, the real name of the Heavenly Father or His only begotten Son. Okay, so what I would like to do is touch on this verse and chapter. And Lord willing, I will provide some edification. So this is the prophet Zephaniah, chapter 3, and verse 9. It says, For then will I turn to the people a pure language, that they may all call upon the name of the Lord Yahweh to serve him with one consent. Okay? So first and foremost... In this chapter, in this verse, the name of Yahweh is found, okay? You have the word LORD in all caps there. And when you go into the Hebrew, you will find out the name there is Yahweh. All right? But it says here, For then will I turn to the people a pure language, okay? A pure language. And as I said before, Although the, the direct precept is the prophet Isaiah 19 and 18 going into the language of Canaan, okay, which is the Hebrew, all right, is going uh, a little deeper here, all right? Because when you will find out that the word for language there is actually uh, the word lip when you go into the Hebrew, all right? So first and foremost, let's deal with the word pure. It comes from the Strong's H, 1305. And the Hebrew word there is bara. Bara, okay? The character ba, ra, ra, bara, right? And it's going into uh, a purification, okay? A cleansing, all right? The word language there, okay, you will find out that the Hebrew word there is not lashawan, which is the Hebrew word for language or, or tongue, all right? But the word language in the Hebrew there is Strong's H 8193, and the Hebrew word is shapa, shapa, right? And it's going into the word lip, all right? The word lip, which is an instrument used to express the heart, okay? To express the contents of the heart, all right? So the phrasing, a pure language or uh, pure lips or purified lips means to utter in a sincere manner, okay? It's applied to upright words and deeds, okay? So, when you read this properly, and even if in some uh, of your Bibles, in the column where the precepts are found, okay, there's uh, other renditions of how the uh, verses are to be read, Okay? And you will have uh, numbers next to 
the word language, like in mine right here, my physical Bible here, there's a number five next to the word language. And when you go into the precept column, the number five uh, reads lip. OK, so another way of reading this verse is for then will I turn to the people a pure lip or a purified lip that they may all call upon the name of the Lord Yahweh to serve him with one consent or with one mind. Right. So. First, we have to establish why. Does our nation need to have our lips purified? Okay. Our lips need to be purified because we were once defiled. Okay. A lot of our people are still defiled this, uh, uh, to this day. Okay. And what made us defiled or what made our lips uh, defiled or unclean is due to the idolatry. And the speaking of the names of these idols, okay, and, and the worship of these idols, all right? Did not the prophet Isaiah in the book of Isaiah uh, uh, 6 and 5 say that he was a man of unclean lips dwelling in the midst of a people of unclean lips? Okay, did not our people fall into uh, uh, idolatry? Did not they go after the ways of... Uh, of the gods of Babylon. Yes, they did. Okay. Even here in these last days, a lot of our people are 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 taken by the idols of Babylon the Great. Okay. So the Lord has to purify us. All right. He has to purify our lips going into uh, uh, the purification of our hearts because the lips once again are instruments used to express uh, the contents of the heart and this goes back to the lesson uh, uh, that our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shammashayak gave the scribes and Pharisees when they was giving him a static about the disciples eating with unwashing hands okay so let's go there real brief and that could be found in St. Matthew. The 15th chapter. And for the sake of edification, I'll read through 1 through 20. It says, Then came to Yahawashai, scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of the Most High by your tradition? For Yahweh commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift. But whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of Yahweh of none effect by your tradition. Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah, or Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrine, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand, not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. Okay? Going into what's in, in your heart. Okay, for out of the uh, out of the heart, the uh, the mouth speaketh. Roughly paraphrasing. Verse twelve. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard the saying? But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. 
they be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. And Yahweh Shai said, Are ye also yet without understanding? Do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the draught? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornication. Okay, and when you go into fornication, the, the uh, spiritual sense of that is uh, idolatry. Thefts, false witness, blasphemies. Verse 20. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashing hands defileth not a man. Okay? So, that which flows from our heart out of our mouths makes us unclean, makes us impure in the sight of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right? So, when we jump back to the prophet Zephaniah, the third chapter, the Lord said that he will turn to us a pure language or a purified lip. Right? Let me get it. A purified lip that they may all call upon the name of Yahweh to serve him with one sin. And it is the hopeful elect who have that purified lip, okay, who are not uh, 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 speaking the names of idols, who are not uh, caught up in idol worship, all right? They are speaking the language of repentance unto the Heavenly Father, okay? Believing in the Most High Yahweh by way of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, all right? And when we jump down to verse 13, it says what? The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity, nor speak lies. Neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. Okay? A deceitful tongue going into a treacherous tongue. And treachery is what? Betrayal. How do you betray the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son? By uh, 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 speaking the names uh, of idols. Okay. Did not it say in the book of Exodus. Which, which chapter is that? This is a commandment now. Bear with me, let me find this precept. Right. Exodus 23 and 13, it says, And in all things that I have said unto you, be circumspect, and make no mention of the name of other gods, neither let it be heard out of thy mouth. Okay? Idolatry makes us unclean and defiled in the sight of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Okay? So here in these last days, the elect... Have that purified lip. They have that pure language, so to speak, to call upon the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai and to serve them with one heart or with one consent, as the scriptures say. All right. 
And although, once again, the direct precept to Zephaniah 3 and 9 is the prophet Isaiah 19 and 18 going into the language of Canaan or the Hebrew we will speak. But it's going into us worshiping the Heavenly Father in a sincere manner. And it's applied to upright words and deeds. Okay. So. Lord willing, this was edifying. Okay. Don't let these false teachers deceive you into not calling on the name of Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right. Because those are the names of your salvation. Shalom.